I cannot go before Thanksgiving because I want to spend Thanksgiving with my family. That's true. That's true. Thank you for your service. Yes, sir. And I'm proud of you of uh, your service you did. Even you though too, your day, day and age, they put you guys down. Bullshit. I am an American fighting you man. Too, you. I serve in the yeah, you too, God's my country and a way of life. I'm prepared to give my life in their defense. Well, I was proud of you. Or Rocky. I was Happy, proud of you. Rocky. Happy Father's Day. Remember you said that too, <laughs> right. When his dad got in the car, he said, "Happy Father's Day." My dad, and I'm proud of you. Thank you. I'm proud of your accomplishments, and I'm proud you didn't get killed in Vietnam. Thank you were, God. You came real close. Almost, to... almost got killed. Yeah. I was MIA for six hours. Yeah. What tour was that? First one. The first one. Oh yeah. I got that's where you got Highway 21. Got, got, we got a bullet or shrapnel in your ankle. Huh? Bullet or shrapnel in your ankle. I got I got them in my, my foot and in my back of my thigh. Sorry. Mm. And uh, <coughs> I was missing for six hours. Everybody was looking for November 4th. They called me November 4th. Since I was an AK-47 probably. Yeah. AK? No, but there was like uh, 130 BC against 15 of us. Woo. David's dad lost it. Right? Yeah, we, we we came up pretty good, even though we had like six people killed, uh, two Americans evacuated, but I wasn't the one. The other two was my, my buddies. And I wanted to fight back, but I had only a carbine, you know. What year was what, that? What am I going to do with a carbine? November 26, 1967. Mm. What am I going to do with a carbine? I cannot kill anybody. With a well, I'll, I'll have you know, and you guys may have not heard this, but before Dad left for Vietnam, he had a talk with me about being the head of the family while he was gone and not making any trouble, and this and that. That's right. Don't get in trouble with school and fights and this and that. That's well, I think that was one of the reasons I excelled in football because I had to. This one guy always tried to pick a fight with me in the castle. And I just kind of carried the anger over because I wouldn't fight back. Yeah. He, he didn't hit me or anything. But, but you, you did tell me that if I have to defend myself, it better be something that. Do you remember you told me that? Well, thanks to you and me channeling my anger somewhere else, I, I came. I was outside a defensive lineman. <laughs> I don't remember all the good stuff. It's a good way to channel because it. Dad, Dad, I had a lot of stuff that happened. And I was, you know, you, you know, know how going I survived Vietnam? That is a guy from Maui. His name was Stanley Butello. He had his ukulele. Every night we'd sit on our bunk and lay down there with a two six pack of beer and look at the stars, sing and cry. And every night we'd sing Blue Darling. Every night. It's so funny because you never talked about it in school though. No. no you you never, block you it out, yeah. Never, like, said anything about you just block it out, yeah. That's because she, that's that's she was always telling me I was mental. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were always just making jokes. Like, like, Ninth grade, ninth grade, did you believe that? Ninth grade? You never seen like here. What year was that, sir? That was 1970. What did you matter back then? But I thought, no, just send me to the field hospital. So I was in the field hospital for about a week. You didn't know I was so deep, did you? I had so much stuff happening, did you? I don't think anybody knew. Everybody just remembered you as a mental rocket. <laughs> Well, I mean... Because you were always making jokes, not mental, like, retarded, but 